Good morning, Endurance friends. Matt Mossman, the Endurance Guru over at Endurelite, coming at you with the first of many live broadcasts that have to do with endurance training, nutrition, and supplementation. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the, uh, <laughs> the poor video quality here, um, but I'd rather spend money making you guys kick-ass supplements than, you know, get fancy uh, camera equipment and whatnot. So... Today's topic, we're going to talk about creatine and the endurance athletes. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about creatine and the endurance athlete. And, you know, I can almost assure you that one of your running buddies or cycling buddies have, have said something like this to you. It goes like this. Hey, bro, creatine's a steroid. It's going to make you big and bulky, and it's going to make you cramp and make you dehydrated, and basically it's just a drug, and you shouldn't take it. That is a bunch of BS. Now, for the majority, you know, the research on creatine does have to do with, you know, the bodybuilding and gym-type crowd. But there is a lot of research that exists on endurance athletes, too, and shows uh, several benefits to, you know, what we're going to, you know, what – what we'll get into here shortly. Um, so don't be afraid of creatine. It's, it's if anything, it's going to improve your endurance performance. So what we're going to kind of briefly talk about today is, you know, what creatine is, how it works from a physiological perspective, uh, how it might benefit you as an endurance athlete, uh, proper dosing, uh, we'll dispel some myths, and then, uh, you know, Definitely ask questions throughout the video if I miss something, as I, I tend to bounce around a lot on certain topics. Um, so feel free to ask questions, and then I will address them. So basically, let's start with how creatine works as a supplement. So when you take creatine monohydrate, uh, standard dosages are from 2 to 5 grams, depending on your goal. When you ingest that, uh, it's taken up into uh, the body as uh, phosphocreatine. Now, the majority of this is going to be stored in the muscle tissue. Approximately 95% of creatine will be stored in the muscle tissues, which is good news for endurance athletes. The rest will be stored in um, your brain, uh, your eyes, and for all you dudes out there, in your balls. Um, so creatine is uptake into the, the muscle tissue. Now, we're going to take a step back. The main role of creatine is to rapidly replenish um, ATP. Now, what ATP is, uh, is um, adenosine triphosphate. And basically, everything that you do, whether you take a breath, you run, you walk, you do whatever, requires ATP. Without it, I mean, you cease to exist. You can't live without ATP. So when ATP is used by the body, say, you know, what you're running, ATP will be basically broken down into adenosine triphosphate, and it needs another phosphate group to regenerate ATP to go to more energy. Sorry to geek out on you here. I, I love this stuff. So the role of creatine phosphate in the muscle tissue is that phosphate is donated to the ADP to rapidly regenerate um, ATP so you can keep on running, riding, um, things of that nature. Now, how is it going to really benefit the endurance athlete? You know, it's it's not, like I said, it's not going to make you big and bulky. It's not going to make you, you know, put on a lot of lean mass like a lot of bodybuilders. I mean, you can absolutely do that if you want to, but it's not necessarily, you know, essential. So with the endurance athlete, the main benefit you're going to see from creatine supplementation, um, where it's really going to come into play, is during hard, short, intense efforts. So if you're a runner, maybe, you know, passing somebody or sprinting towards the finish line. If you're a biker, giving them a breakaway, uh, powering up a hill, things of that nature. So that's where you're going to see the most benefit of creatine. Also, with creatine, it can cause an influx of water into the cell. So from a hydration standpoint, um, it might be pretty beneficial as well. Um, additionally, there's a lot of cool research out there that shows when uh, creatine is combined with a carbohydrate and a protein that it can basically increase glycogen uptake by the muscles if you weren't, you know, taking a carbohydrate with those two things. Um, there's other research that shows um, that it can increase VO2 max, but, you know, I'm not fully convinced on that one. The main benefit, like I said, is for like those short, intense bursts, um, uh, during, you know, like a race or a workout when you need lots of energy produced rapidly, uh, like I said, to sprint to the finish line, you know, for obstacle course racers, climbing a rope or, or, or whatnot. So 
that's a little bit about the benefits of creatine for an endurance athlete. Now, typically people are going to tell you, you know, you should be getting five grams of creatine uh, daily through supplementation. And this is really the best way to saturate muscle creatine stores. I mean, you could try to do it through your diet, through like meat and, you know, fish and, and things like that. But literally you would have to eat close to like 10 to 20 ribeyes to get the efficacious amount uh, of creatine to saturate muscle creatine stores, which, hey, go for it, man. Go to the Brazilian steakhouse and chow down. But uh, it might be easier and more cost effective just to get it through a, a creatine supplement. So recommended dose is two to five grams. Um, as an endurance athlete, you probably don't want to go up to five grams. One of the uh, often cited downsides of creatine supplementation is, is weight gain. And as endurance athletes, we're really not looking for that. We want to keep a good uh, strength to weight ratio. We want to move fast, and we don't necessarily want to be carrying around a lot of bulk. So as an endurance athlete, uh, you should really shoot for two to three grams of, of creatine daily, and you'll get some nice benefits um, of the creatine without uh, the weight gain. Now, in terms of timing creatine, it, it doesn't really matter. I usually recommend it post-workout. Um, but with creatine, it, it basically has zero acute or immediate effects. It requires a loading phase. So at taking two to three grams daily, uh, you could probably expect to get muscle creatine stores pretty saturated in about, uh, about 30 days, but you'll see benefits um, before that. Now, speaking of saturation, an unsupplemented individual, um, you know, muscle creatine stores are about at uh, about two grams. So not a lot. So creatine supplementation can increase this uh, creatine saturation or creatine pool in the body anywhere from like 10 to 40 percent, which is which is pretty damn significant um, when you think about it. Now, where's the variance going to be between, you know, how much you can saturate it? Um, a lot of it will depend on diet. Uh, you have a diet high in protein and meats and stuff like that your ability to saturate those muscle creatine stores probably won't be as high. Now, if you're a vegetarian, uh, you know, you're probably on the lower end of the creatine saturation uh, point in your body. So creatine supplementation will probably boost it by about, um, about 40%. Now, as far as the total amount of creatine you can store, in a 70 kilogram individual like me, you can probably store about oh, 120 grams. And then again, depending on individual you know characteristics that amount can get up to 160 grams uh, with creatine it's something you want to take every day too um, just because muscle creatine stores decrease by about one to two percent uh, every day through just you know, living and, and exercise and and whatnot so you don't necessarily have to ever cycle off of it um, or anything like that now, like as a whole, the research is, is very, very solid on creatine. I think there's been over close to 700 studies performed on creatine now, with 70% of them showing um, a 5 to 15% improvement in endurance, uh, endurance performance. Um, so first question, great info. Same timing and amounts for men and women. Uh, timing of creatine, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can take it whenever you want. I prefer it uh, post-workout. Uh, same amount for men and women. It, it doesn't really matter there. Again, like if you're a man, you may have the ability uh, to uptake more creatine just because you have a higher amount of muscle mass. But as a whole, uh, I would say as an endurance athlete, start at three grams of uh, creatine monohydrate daily. Um, if you feel yourself, you know, putting on a little bit of weight with that amount, you know, definitely decrease it to two grams, um, and you should get some of those uh, those nice benefits as well. Um, let's just talk about briefly about like the various forms of creatine out there. So you have you have creatine monohydrate, you have creatine HCL, you have about twenty. Last I counted, about twenty different versions of uh, of creatine. Uh, but here's the thing, like, and I'm going to go back to a point I was touching on before. Uh, here's the thing. Creatine monohydrate has about 700 studies done on it, showing it to be safe and effective uh, and, and to work really well with, you know, no side effects, basically, which we'll, we'll get into these and bust some myths here in a second. These other forms of creatine out there, like the creatine HCL, uh, their whole theory is, like, the hydrochloric acid will make the creatine more soluble in water, and which should lead to great absorptions, and you could take, you know, uh, a lesser amount of creatine. But that's, that's not true. There's very little research that exists on other forms of creatine. Um, 
And usually those other forms of creatine that aren't monohydrate are a lot more expensive. So I'll just, I'll just tell you this right now. If you want to try creatine, just get a straight creatine monohydrate. It's, it's going to serve you best. It's going to be pretty cost effective. Um, and like I said, it's not going to be as expensive as these other various forms of, of, of creatine. So let's um, jump into some, to some creatine myths here that, again, you've probably heard this before. Uh, probably the one I hear most often is uh, creatine will cause dehydration. Uh, no, there, there's no truth to that. There's been over about 12 studies done on, on creatine and hydration, and none of them showed a dehydrating effect on, on creatine. Um, so, you know, if you take creatine and find you're dehydrated, you know, this is probably because you're not drinking enough fluid to begin with. Um, and it's actually quite the opposite. Like I said, with creatine, it can cause influx of water into the cell. Um, and there's a lot of studies out there that show it can really be beneficial in a hot and humid environment um, in terms of endurance exercise performance. Um, the other myth you'll hear about creatine is it, it causes cramping. Again, that's a bunch of crap. Um, you know, if you're cramping, there's probably a lot of other underlying issues uh, that are leading to that, but it's, it's definitely not the creatine. Uh, I've heard creatine, you know, creatine's gonna destroy your kidneys. Absolutely not. Uh, again, pure, pure crap. Um, one of my favorites, you know, creatine is a drug, it's a steroid. No, it, it is not. Um, you get creatine from your regular diet. So you are a creatine basically consumer already. And like I said, you get creatine through meat and fish and things like that. Um, and then it, it's also synthesized in the liver and pancreas from the amino acids, arginine, glycine, and, and methathionine. So uh, again, those, you know, that's all creatine myths. Like there is no other dietary supplement that has been studied more than creatine for a longer period of time um, I mean, the combined cre creatine research probably outweighs the combined research of a lot of other supplements. And again, 700 studies have been performed on creatine, and 70% of those show that, you know, it's increased performance, uh, both in the endurance and more of the, uh, the weightlifting crowd. So, you know, and beyond the, the performance meds of creatine, too, there's a lot of new cool research coming out uh, with creatine and brain health. We mentioned before that, you know, Creatine is mostly stored in the muscle tissue, about 95% of that. Um, but again, there's a certain amount that's also stored in the brain, the eyes, and the testes. Uh, so a lot of cool, like I said, a lot of cool research showing, you know, creatine can lead, uh, lead to improved brain health, especially uh, with people who've had like traumatic head injuries um, and things of that nature. Um, so that's about it for, uh, for creatine today. I'm gonna open it up right now if anybody's interested in asking any questions about creatine or if there's, um, if there's anything I missed. Um, so uh, feel free to fire away and I'm gonna answer this as uh, best I can. So it looks like <laughs> it looks like no questions, which 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 that's okay. Um, so let's just conclude with this. Like as a whole, I would recommend creatine to any endurance athlete out there. You don't have to be lifting weights to get the benefits of creatine. Uh, wait, here's a here's a question from Kevin. Kevin, as a supplement store owner, I get the question a lot, will creatine make me bloated? Yeah, that's a, that's a very common question, Kevin. Um, absolutely not. Some people will say like when they take creatine, they'll notice like a puffiness in their skin, but that's absolutely not possible because it's, store, it's basically stored intercellular in the body. So creatine is taken up to these muscle cells, which are intercellular. That in, increases the influx of fluid, but it's not underneath like uh, subcutaneous skin where you're going to get like a bloating or a, um, a puffiness. So uh, complete myth. Like I said about the only downside of creatine is, is weight gain. But again, it depends who you are. Like if you're, a, if you're a bodybuilder or a weightlifter or stuff like that, you might want that weight gain. But, you know, like I said, if you're an endurance athlete, you just need to decrease that amount to about two to three grams, and you'll get some awesome benefits of creatine um, without the weight gain. 
Uh, let's see. Any other questions at all? I'm trying to think if I missed anything on creatine as a whole. Let me review some notes here and see if I can get you any other good information. Um, we can talk about this a little bit. Uh, with it, with Enduralite, we're going to be having a recovery supplement coming out probably in the next three to four months. And we're trying to make the decision if we want to include um, two to three grams of creatine monohydrate in our recovery drink or um, include it as a standalone product. So if you guys have any opinions on what you'd like to see there, I'd be, I'd be interested in hearing about that. My inclination is to, uh, to include it as a standalone supplement that you could add to your uh, recovery lead that we have coming out. And that's just because, like I said, there's still a ton of misconceptions out there about, um, about creatine and the endurance athlete. But, you know, I would put it right up there, like in terms of like the most beneficial supplements for endurance athletes as a whole. I mean, the top five I would be looking at would probably be caffeine, beetroot powder, beta alanine, uh, you know, creatine I, I would definitely put there. And then, uh, you know, carbohydrates, if you, if you consider that a supplement, like through your gel and things like that. So I would, like I said, I would never be hesitant to recommend creatine to, to any endurance athlete. And, and here's the thing, you know, try it, you know, try it. If you want to try it, give it a try for at least a good, a good month or two. Um, I can almost guarantee you're going to know some really nice effects from it. But, you know, if not, no big deal. Hey, you tried it, it, it did or didn't work, and you can continue or choose not to continue to use it. I mean, the stuff is dirt cheap, like creatine monohydrate. You can get probably close to, you know, 100 servings for, for 10 bucks. And like I said, you can mix it in your post-workout drink. You can mix it in fruit juice um, and then basically take it um, whenever you want. Uh, timing, like I said, doesn't matter at all. Um, that's, like I said, that's about it. Um, fire away with any other questions. Um, I'm going to review my notes here make sure I didn't miss anything and see if there's anything else you absolutely have to know. Um, don't know if we talked about a loading phase yet for creatine. So generally, um, a lot of people would recommend loading creatine. So the, usually the general protocol is, you know, you do five to 10 or five to 15 grams a day for the first five days and then five grams after that to, to saturate muscle creatine stores quickly uh, or more quickly. Um, while you can do that, it, you know, you can just stick with the, the two to three grams daily as an endurance athlete and you'll eventually saturate muscle creatine stores. This is going to take you a little bit longer. So probably, like I said, about 25 to, to 30 days to, to saturate muscle creatine stores. But again, you'll probably start seeing benefits after uh, 10 to 15 days. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, you know, tell me what you guys think about creatine um, in the comments after I post this video. Tell me if you tried it, experimented with it, if you if you like it or don't like it. Um, and then also let me know what you want to talk about or learn about next week. We can talk about anything endurance training, nutrition, or uh, supplement related, and I'll do the best uh, to give you accurate information as always and uh, try to make you more, I guess, informed endurance athlete, especially, you know, when it comes to improving your, your performance. So unless there's any other questions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duck out here and, and get off to my day and go for a, a nice run here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. The temperatures are balmy, about 10 degrees out day, so practically a heat wave. So i got to get out and get it while I can. So uh, until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, and stay fast.